Hey yo, what's going on everyone, Nathan here. So within the past few weeks, Apple released macOS 13, also known as macOS Ventura. And with that came some very notable new features to the Mac operating system, and also makes it more familiar to iOS and iPadOS. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over my 10 personal favorite new features to macOS Ventura. I think the best place to start off is with probably the biggest one that most people know about, and that is called Stage Manager. Stage Manager is Apple's new approach to multitasking and keeping all of your windows organized. To activate this, go to the control center at the top right menu and toggle it on, and then its icon will appear in the menu bar also for quick access. So essentially how Stage Manager works is you have your current window in front of you, and as you minimize your window, it gets moved over to the left-hand side of the screen. The more windows you minimize, the more stacks you will see, and if you're on a 14-inch MacBook Pro, then the most you can have is five separate stacks, and the larger displays can have up to six stacks. Switching between stacks is super easy, and all you have to do is click on the new stack, and it'll switch between that and your current one, and this process between going back and forth is super quick and simple. Unfortunately, in the current macOS Ventura, you cannot change the position of the windows in Stage Manager, but I do hope Apple adds a feature like this in the future because it does seem relatively simple to add that in, and I think a lot of people would appreciate that as well. So what's also really nice about Stage Manager is that you can have multiple windows open at the same time, and you can put them into the same grouping together. To make a group, just drag out an application from the sidebar and size each window to how you want. And so now as you switch from one stack to another, it will minimize and expand all the applications in their sizing, how you left them from the previous time. And again, it's just a super quick and simple way to switch between different sets of like organized windows. And a quick note, there also doesn't seem to be a limit as to how many windows you can have in a group at one time. Again, I haven't tried like, you know, hundreds of them, but I have tried like up to 10 and it definitely does work with all that. So just keep that in mind as well. Stage Manager also works with multiple windows with the same application and they just stack on top of each other. And so if you have one, for example, right here, Safari, in my current window, and then I have one in the stage manager on the left-hand side. Just click on the one stage manager, and then they'll flip-flop places. And just overall, I think stage manager is a great new feature to Mac OS. I do like this system of organization. There are some areas to be improved, but overall, big win for me. So the second change to Mac OS Ventura is called system settings, or previously known as system preferences. This is essentially like settings from iOS and system preferences from macOS came together, had a baby, and boom, we now have system settings. It might take time to get used to the new layout, but instead of one window with all the sections there, you now have a scrolling list just like in iOS settings, and here you're able to enter in each category or search more specifically what you want. So overall, this is definitely a small change to macOS Ventura, but I do like this over system preferences. I just like how this is organized organized more. There's that scroll on the left-hand side and just new categories. So I definitely like that about this as well. So the third new feature to macOS Ventura is called Continuity Camera, and this one's really cool. This feature allows you to use your iPhone's much better camera as a webcam for your MacBook. All you need is a MagSafe mount for your iPhone. This one here is made by Belkin and it's sold on Apple's website, and you attach it to the top of your screen. Then open any application that utilizes the MacBook's webcam and at the top left go over to video in the menu bar and switch to the camera of your iPhone. Using these better cameras also gives you more video effects which can be found in the control center and these consist of center stage which is where the camera will follow you as you move around the frame in the room, portrait mode which blurs out your background, studio light that darkens your background and also brightens you up at the same time which will make you just stand out from any setting that you're in, and finally is desk view which does a bunch of AI processing and produces a top down view of your desk while your camera stays upright. This is a very useful feature for any desk demonstrations and you don't have to move your screen down to get an angle. Your camera can just stay right up there on your MacBook and it works super well. 
So by no means is continuity camera perfect. As you can see right here, it definitely does show warping, but that's just all the processing that it's doing from that wide angle lens on your iPhone. So just keep that in mind. It's not perfect, but definitely good enough for anyone trying to show their desk or their hands for any sort of web call. But if you do want to learn more about continuity camera, I did just make a full video going over it. I even have a couple other tips and features that you can use with that continuity camera. So make sure you check out that video as well. So feature number four, it's another small one, but I just think it's a nice quality of life improvement and that is called FaceTime handoff. If you are on a FaceTime call with someone on your iPhone or iPad and within range of your Mac, you can then press the FaceTime icon in the menu bar of your Mac and this will switch the FaceTime call over here without having to ever end the call. So again, this isn't a super major feature, but it is just actually really cool how you can just transfer the call over without skipping a beat. And it could definitely be useful, especially because FaceTime uses so much battery on your phone. If your phone starts to die, just switch over your Mac and you're all set. So I'm a big fan of FaceTime handoff. So the fifth feature to macOS Ventura is the weather app. And I don't know why it took Apple so long to implement a weather app into macOS, but it's finally here and you can't complain about it anymore. Opening the weather app, you will see the current temperature, the high and low for the day, and the background will also update based on the current weather conditions outside in your area. This also gives you an hour to hour forecast, a 10 day forecast, precipitation graphs that can be simulated 12 hours out, and pretty much everything else that you could need to know in a day. So it's nice to finally have the weather app on the Mac since I would say this is Apple's like most productive product that they sell. And I'm sure a lot of people use this the most. So just being able to open up, check the weather from the same device that they're probably using the most anyway is a nice feature. I'm glad it's finally here. So the sixth feature comes to messages and more specifically in the form of editing and unsending messages, very similar to iOS 16. Essentially how this works is after a message is sent, you have 15 minutes to edit the text. To do this, right click on the message and go down to edit and you can change it to whatever you want. Just so you know, when you edit a message, it will be sent with a little edited word underneath it so the person receiving it also knows that it has been edited. So they won't be able to see what your original message had said in it, but they will be notified that it was edited and I do like this because it does show some sort of transparency between you and the person that you're talking to. Like they don't ever have to know what it was said, but just them having an idea that it was changed or altered, I think is good for everyone to at least be aware of. And if you completely just regret the message that you sent or you just sent it to the wrong person or a family member, which I know many of us probably have done before, then you can now unsend messages too, but you have to do this within two minutes of sending the message. So you have to be pretty aware of when you send that message and it's just kind of like a last resort saver for most people. So to do this, go to whatever message it is, right click and go down to undo send and this will undo it. And just remember again, two minutes. So you better be quick with it if you know that you send it to the wrong person and you just can't have them seeing it. If you unsend a message, it will be noted in the chat itself that a message had been unsent. So the other person is aware that that message was taken away. So again, they won't be able to read the message or see it, but at least that they know that a message was taken away. So overall, these are huge updates to the messages app. So the seventh feature to macOS Ventura is the ability to lift subjects in images from their background and being able to copy and paste that anywhere. This works in photos, quick search, safari, screenshots, and all you need to do is right click or two finger press on the trackpad and go over to the copy subject button. If you hover over this button for a split second, you will see a white glowing line trace out the subject of the photo. And out of all the ones that I tried, it got them perfect nearly every time. Now, when you press this button, you can go over to any other app such as Messages, Word, Google Docs, and you can paste the subject into these and it'll just come up as a picture with no background and it's worked really well so far. And I really like this feature. It's so cool to me and I'm glad that it's now in macOS as well. 
So the eighth feature in macOS Ventura comes to Spotlight Search. To activate the Spotlight Search, if anyone is unaware, you press the command button and the space button at the same time, and now you have access to look up pretty much anything that you want. So one of the new features is called Quick Look, and essentially what this does is after you search something up, whatever you scroll down to, when you press the space bar on that object, it'll pull up a quick preview of it, whether it's a document, a photo, and it just saves you from going to that website, going to that photo, and it'll just help you save time overall. Quick preview, exit out of it if you don't want that one, and I do like this feature a lot with that. And you can also set a timer from Spotlight Search. To do this, type timer, and you will get an option menu where you can adjust the time range and start it from here. Once you start the timer, an icon will appear in the top right of your menu bar, and when you go here, you have the ability to stop, adjust, or reset the timer as needed. So I think that these are all really nice features to add to Spotlight Search, and I do use it all the time, so I just like having these new features in there as well. So the ninth new feature to macOS Ventura is called Background Sounds, and yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It'll play low or mellow sounds for you, either in the background to help you sleep or to help you study, do homework, or just be more productive. So I personally like this one because I actually do like play sounds quite often, whether I'm trying to fall asleep and there's like people being loud in the dorm, or when I'm trying to study, just having like that background noise really does help you focus in. To find this, go to System Settings, Accessibility, Audio, and scroll down to background sounds. And here you can select between balanced, bright, or dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. So my personal favorite is the dark noise. It's just this nice, mellow sound. I like having it on when I'm studying or grading papers for my TA position here. But just so you can hear for yourself, here's all six sounds. And finally, my 10th favorite feature is the new macOS Ventura wallpaper and screensaver. I love the animation style of the macOS Monterey screensaver, and I'm glad that they followed that up with a new one of the same style. There's something so simple, relaxing, and just beautiful of how it infinitely zooms in, and I really enjoy this running in the background of my desk setup. To access this, go to System Settings, Screensaver, and select on Ventura. And also there is a dynamic wallpaper that has a nice gradient that adjusts throughout the day. So in the middle of the day, it's nice and bright and at nighttime, it's dark. I personally like the dark version of this more. I just like the colorway of it and how it's a little softer on the eyes. But overall, the wallpaper and screensaver of Ventura, I really like with this new update. So those are my top 10 favorite features from the new macOS Ventura. Again, there's nothing like super crazy with it. Everything is still nice and familiar from beforehand, just with some nice added improvements to it that I think everyone can enjoy in some form or another. I think macOS just keeps getting better over time. So that's gonna be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, or if you learned something new, then please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe. And as always, have a great day, everyone, and cheers.